why didn't Jack D, who lives so close, not call the family when Denise had already called? I don't know. That, that's my... I've asked that from, like, that's like, why didn't you call 911? Jack D has been dating this young woman since they were, what, in middle school? And you're telling me his first call isn't too steep? As close to the family as he was, too. That was an issue for me. And he knew about it, I mean, early on when he went to get the dog. So unless they had him in a holding cell, he still gets a phone call. You call your mom and you say, call, call, call Kaylee's parents. You call the right. mom, you know what I'm saying? Yep. You, st you have a cell phone in your hand. The minute it happens, who do you call? Why didn't he? Right? Good point. Very good Why point. Why didn't he call them? I would be, my daughter dated a boy through college and I know, I know, with, and I know one of my boys, I don't, anybody, anybody out there ask yourself, wouldn't the first call be to your girlfriend's parents if you know it's just occurred or if you know she's in any kind of part, even if you don't know she's gone, but if you know something went down in that house, I mean, he called and got the dog. The right. Humane Society said they call, he called, they told me that. So he called about the dog, yet he did not call Kaylee's family. Why? Yeah, that's, that's kind of whack if you ask me. I'm sorry. I have a really hard time with understanding that. And uh, and here's the other thing. The worst thing on the planet is for them to lose both of those kids. Because not only do they lose Maddie and Kaylee, then they lose Jack, too, because oh. Jack somehow... I mean, involved. that is just... How do you, right? So, and maybe he's innocent. Maybe I, he has an explanation. I don't know. But... I don't know. I don't know. Why did you call the parents? Gonzalez's sister, Olivia, said that her sister's phone records show that she called a man named Jack Ducour several times on the night she was murdered. The call log has six calls between 2.26 a.m. and 2.44 a.m. to Ducour. Madison Mogan also called the same person three times between 2.44 a.m. and 2.52 a.m. The last call to the man on Gonzalez's phone was logged at 2.52 a.m. One of the victim's ex-boyfriends named Jack has found himself under the microscope, but the victim's family says he has absolutely nothing to do with the gruesome slayings. The family of slain college student Kaylee Consalvis is coming to the defense of her ex-boyfriend. Kaylee recently broke up with Jack Ducour after dating him for five years. Her father, brother, and sister were asked about the relationship today on CNN. He is not listed, notably, as someone who has been cleared in the investigation. T to your knowledge, is that significant? No, um, I, I don't personally think so, because I think that there's the entire rest of the world that's also not on that list of people who have been cleared. Right. We're also aware of a male who Madison and Kaylee had called several times the morning of November 13th, and we do not suspect that individual.
I just feel like there's been a couple individuals that were cleared very fast. That may not, maybe he should not have been. And yeah. Share the strong alibi. Just really fast. It, just you can like, just you miss. Know, an hour later and we're like, what? And I don't know. I don't know anything about those individuals. I just know right. they were people that, you know, definitely should have been looked at and yeah. I don't know what would prevent you from sharing somebody's alibi. They so just so I understand room. this correctly, your daughter is stating that the night of the incident, that her friend that had this information that told her uh, about this and her friend's boyfriend who attends the University of Idaho claimed to have stayed at your daughter's house. Correct. But you were there and you didn't see them. And I didn't right. see him and that did not set well. So what my understanding was, was that my daughter's sorority sister was at the house at some point, but the boyfriend was not at the house, which I learned after pulling it out of her teeth. And that two of the kids involved who were looked at closely um, were he was their ally and right. he went to fast food and then he went to their house so they played video games all night then he left it he said 7 30 or 8 and then went back and got his girlfriend from pullman and that's so right. right and so i think so that's 7 30 to 8 30 time frame you know right that and she so she went back there she she left with him is my understanding was what i was told do i think the sorority sister might have stayed at my daughter's house or not but knew at 8 30 and there was a narrative discovered and built and, and so i called the fbi back because i called them all the time and they said we've discovered several lies in the alibis and that's what their exact words to me were they've discovered several lies in the alibis so I believe that they believe whatever has been told because the um, defense's investigator has called me and asked for confirmation. And I conf I'll confirm with anybody. I don't, want, I, I don't know what he did, if he did or not. I'm not saying who's going. I don't know. I do not know. Just want the right person to go down for it because these kids go back to school in three weeks. So that's all I can tell you at this point about the alibi is that the, the alibi, according to what I knew as their alibi, does not wash. When that tape came out about Adam, I told Adam everything. My question, of course, was then to the kids, what did she tell Adam? And then somehow, and I do know the, it was about drugs and it was about involved with throwing drugs away. I know that the students knew they were gonna be shaken down, that I know, for something, for the drugs being missing or the money being missing. I knew, I know that. The kids all know that, but they didn't expect them to be killed. I don't think anybody expected them to be killed. I think so. I told Adam everything. I, I don't think, I think it has to do with, they threw away drugs. I mean, she's, Maddie was done with it and threw away whatever it was that needed to be thrown away. I don't know if it was, I don't know what it was, but I believe it was thrown away in a garbage can next door. And, um, I think the girls were waiting until they were both done to report to the police or maybe what they had learned. Yeah. And I think she maybe told Adam that, not realizing Adam was would tell somebody tell else. Somebody else, which Adam and Jack uh -huh. were, were roommates, folks. So I understand that there's a very right. grand possibility. That's what was passed along in that sense. So that's you my know. understanding of what occurred. Right, and that this is all very speculative theory, so don't take any of this. And the, and the FBI has that, and so does the defense. I've told, uh, the defense called me when they called me, they asked me right. questions about that, and I told the FBI that immediately too. Right, and also in that same walk conversation that was recorded, Jack Showalter says something to Maddie that nobody can clearly verify what it was. I think he, he was warning, he said, you. You you gotta you better be careful, Maddie. They're gonna get you. It's a good point. Unless yeah. it was a purposeful leak, 
Maybe somebody leaked it on purpose. On purpose to know. make a point. Yeah. That and the and, or and to I don't, get information out of people. That's 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 another know. point. Yeah. I don't like I said, nothing's off the table. I don't think that I don't think Jack DeCourt hurt anybody. I don't think he hurt his I think he loved Carrie. I think that all of these children likely could have stopped it from happening by saying something to somebody, their parents. I think they were all sucked into something that was way bigger than them. That's what I think. If I think any of these kids are guilty, that's what I think. They're guilty of being naive. We're tired of all these types of crimes. We're tired of all this stuff. And um, we can rally around these terrible tragedies and we're hoping that as a society we come back stronger and we, we decide to not let this be accepted anymore. You know, that's what I hope for. You're all in danger until you decide to say what you know. It doesn't matter. Facing this now is eventually it will come out. Face it now together as a group before somebody else dies. Before you go into more funerals. <laughs>